Hey guys, it's Tanika, and in today's video, I am going over 10 new products that have recently entered my collection, and I just want to give you a little review and my updates on them. I've got a mix of drugstore and high-end here, so if this sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. First on the list is this Savvy Cheek and Lip Color, and I have the shade Sleek Rose. <sighs> So I had been on the hunt for a liquid blush because I wanted to use it for when I do more no makeup makeup looks. And I was finding it pretty hard to find something at Priceline, but I come across this one. Now Savvy is a very, very affordable brand, kind of cheap you could say. I don't think a lot of their products are that good. So I picked this one up on a whim, I think it was like $5, maybe less, but whole Lee Molly, it is good. So it's described as a lip and cheek product. It's a cream formula. This is the shade here. And if you blend it out, you can just see that it gives that really nice tint of color. It does have a little bit of a shimmer in it, which I don't mind because I like my blush to look kind of glowy. I feel like it gives just a little bit more life to the skin. I like to use this Real Techniques sculpting brush to apply it. The bristles are nice and dense, but the top is fluffy enough that it blends the product out nicely. I just tap it into the product a few times and then stipple it across my face. It blends out beautifully. It's not too pigmented, which I love because that way you can build the color up. You're not going in with too much and then just freaking out. This is an absolute gem and for the price, I just, cannot believe it. It does come in a few other colors as well. So if you're after a cream cheek product, I would definitely recommend checking this out because man, I'm in love. One more thing, because it's cheaper, I didn't think it would last very long on the skin, but it absolutely does. I wear it to work eight hour, nine hour days. And by the time I get home, I can still see the blush on my cheeks. So fantastic. Next, I have some concealers I want to talk about. The first one is by Becca. And I don't know if it has an actual title. The Becca Ultimate Coverage Longwear Concealer. Maybe that's what it's called. But anyway, this is in the shade Linen. It's the lightest shade. I just picked this one up on a whim. I don't usually do that. I like to research my products first, especially if they're high end because I don't want to be spending the money and wasting it. I feel like that's what I should have done because I think I wasted my money on this one. It's a very thick concealer, but not in the same kind of way that Tarte Shape Tape is. It's more like, it's kind of sticky. I don't know, I'm just not the biggest fan. I put it under my eyes and it just feels heavy. It does have really good coverage and you only need a little bit, but it's just a bit too much for under the eye on me. The shade as well isn't that light. Using it under my eyes, it didn't really brighten. It kind of just covered the area. So what I've been doing is using this more as a blemish concealer rather than under the eyes. So as you know, I like to color correct. I go in with my green concealer and then I go in with this over the top to cover everything up. It works really well as that, but for like probably 40 to $50, I can't really remember. I don't know, I just don't think I needed it and I regret not researching it first. <laughs> Next I have the Jouer, Jouer, I don't know. It's the Essential High Coverage Concealer and this is in the shade Snow. Now this concealer's consistency is much better. It feels really lightweight under the eyes and has a really nice medium to buildable full coverage, I would say. The color Snow is so fair. If you want to brighten under your eyes and you're fair like me, this is the one to go for. Here is a swatch of it here. So this is the Jouer Jouer, and this is the Becca concealer that I just talked about. I do really like this concealer. I don't feel like I have that much to say about it. It's not like, oh my God, this is the best in the world, but it's not, this is crap. Once I use it all up, I probably wouldn't repurchase it, but if you're after a medium to full, lightweight, and really, really fair concealer, then I would recommend it. And then lastly for concealers, I have the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. And if you don't follow me on Instagram or haven't seen my last couple of videos, then you wouldn't know that I absolutely love this. Like I am obsessed with this concealer. The coverage is just so 
full. The two lighter shades are so fair. The first one, Fair Warm, is probably a little bit too fair. This is it swatched next to the Jouer. So as you can see, it has a bit more of a neutral undertone where the Jouer one is more pink undertoned. But holy hell, how light is that? Like, for drugstore, amazing. This one is very similar to the Tarte Shape Tape. So if you love that but wanted a drugstore dupe, this is the one and only dupe to go for. I'm telling you now. It does dry down quite matte. So if you have really dry under eyes or aren't a fan of that, I wouldn't recommend. I'd probably go the Jouer one because that one doesn't dry really matte. It's more of a satin matte kind of finish. But yeah, you can pick this one up from Kmart for $10 and if you're into full coverage, then what are you doing? Go to Kmart and get it right now. Next, I have some primers. The first one is the NYX Away We Glow Strobing Cream. This comes in two shades and I have the shade called Bright Star. So this has more of a golden undertone, where I believe the other one is more of a pinky undertone. If you want a dupe for MAC Strobe Cream, this is your guy right here. I'll show you what it looks like on the back of my hand. So it does come in this tube, but it also has a pump. So it is a bit more of a thicker consistency than Strobe Cream, but as you can see, it just gives, oh, look at that glow. So that's quite a heavy application, but if you were to sheer that out, look at that glow. <laughs> I, just, I just can't. NYX is still quite expensive at the drugstore here in Australia. I think this retails for like $25 to $30. So wait until it's on sale to pick it up because even though I'd say it's worth that, do you really want to pay $30 for a drugstore primer? <laughs> I don't. I just love the glow it gives. You can see it shining through your foundation. It just makes you look really healthy and radiant. And because it's drugstore, I am just like, yes. The next primer is the Cover FX Dewy Skin Primer. And uh, I just don't know about this one, hey? I'm pretty sure I saw Kathleen Lights raving about this, which is why I picked it up because I trust her opinion like, 100% but I just oh, I don't know it's like this clear liquid but it's almost like goopy like I understand it's meant to give you that dewy look but when you apply it on your face it's like you need a good five to ten minutes for it to kind of dry down I went in once like straight away and just put my foundation on top and I felt like it kind of slid around and when I set it with powder it just was taking a really long time and I could see that the foundation had moved and I was just a bit like, what's going on, you know? I've only used it like three or four times and I feel like I get the same results each time. So I'm just like, not sure. If you've used this, let me know in the comments down below how you make it work because I just feel like it's a little bit too gooey and almost oily on the skin. It's very strange. <laughs> The next product is one I want to rave about, and this is the new Fenty Sunstalker Bronzer, and I have it in the lighter shade Inda Sun. I feel so lame saying that, Inda Sun. Like, can it just be Inda Sun? I do have a full review and demo on this bronzer. I will link it down below for you, but to wrap it up real quickly, it is so perfect for fair skin. It's a matte formula. It does feel a little bit dry to touch, but once you dip your brush in and go in on your face, it just blends out so beautifully and it is really buildable as well, which I love. I find it is just the perfect shade for me. It really warms up my complexion without leaving me looking orange. It's got that nice, slightly cooler undertone, which works perfectly for fair skin. Bronzer is a product I use every single day. I find I need it to just give me that warmth and life back to my complexion. So if you wanted to spoil yourself, I would definitely recommend the Fenty Bronzer. Last one in the high-end category is the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel. <sighs> okay, this is so good. I think it was like $28, which I don't know why I bought it, like a brow gel for $28, but oh my God, it is so freaking good. I picked up the shade Blonde, which is a really nice, cool undertoned light blonde color, which 
is perfect for me. I prefer my brows to be more on the cooler side rather than that warm auburn kind of tone. It has a nice tiny little wand, which if you've been here a while, you would know my obsession with tiny little brow wands for my gels. I just, it's so much easier to use. This product is going to set your brows in place. I love that this brow gel is tinted. I find it works really well, especially for me. Sometimes I get a few little blonde hairs peeking through, so it grabs onto those and tints them, so it blends into the rest of my brow. The fibers in this brow gel really cling onto my lack of hair and make my brows look a lot bushier and hairier than what they are. That sounds so bad. For the $30 price tag, I don't think it's something that you absolutely need. The Essence Brow Gel does pretty much the same job. The only difference is I find the ABH gel has a longer and stronger hold. Again, if you wanted to spoil yourself, it's something I definitely recommend. I'm not sure if I will repurchase it because I don't think it's something I absolutely need in my collection, but it's definitely a product that I am loving at the moment. Next, I have some lipsticks from the brand Astralis. If you didn't know, the Girlboss Demi Matte Lip Cream in the shade Empower, which is what I'm wearing right now, is my go-to lipstick. It just goes with everything. It's the perfect nude. I'm in love. So when I saw they released like bullet lipsticks, you know I had to try them. I picked up two shades. The first one is called Couture and the second one is called Black Tie. Couture is another nude shade and it is just so beautiful. I did end up breaking it though, so that sucks. But let me do a swatch for you. Okay, so here is the Demi Matte Lip Cream in the shade Empower. This one is the lipstick in Couture and this one is Black Tie. So as you can see, the difference between these ones is that Empower is just a little bit more deep. I find it has a bit more of a mauvey undertone to it. Couture is just a really nice brownie nude. If you wanted something just a little bit more, I don't know, kind of vampy, then that's a really good shade. These are a matte formula, but I find they're a very, very comfortable matte. They are not super drying. They don't settle into all the little lines on your lips. They are really pigmented, glide on beautifully, and they stay in place for quite a long time because they are a matte formula. I'm pretty sure the shade range is huge. So if you're after some new lipsticks, I would definitely recommend these ones. And the packaging is a bonus as well. Like how nice is the rose gold? And it's got a magnetic cap, just satisfying. And lastly, I have two eyeshadow palettes I want to talk about. The first one is the Makeup Revolution X Temi Tropical Carnival Shadow Palette. Now, I had never heard of the influencer Temi before, but when I saw this palette released, I was excited. These colors just really got me going, and I thought it would be a good chance to have some fun with my makeup. Now, my problem here is some of the shadows are great, and others are absolute trash. I did a bluey greeny look and all those shades I used were absolutely amazing. I do find that the shimmers are pressed a little bit hard, but they still had plenty of pigment, no fallout. And then one night I decided to have a play with the palette and use the more warmer tones. Okay. Yellow was good. Orange was good. Bad, 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 bad. Just like. <laughs> so I'm playing with the Revolution Temi palette again. And some of the shades are really good and some of them are not so good. Like, how did the same person <laughs> do this, but also do this? <laughs> what the heck? The quality of this palette is just so inconsistent, which really bugs me because, duh. I understand that Makeup Revolution is more of an affordable brand and maybe that's why there's these inconsistencies. It's just a real bummer because this is a really, really nice, colorful eyeshadow palette. You can create so many looks with it and I'm just a bit bummed that some of the shades didn't quite work out. So that's unfortunate and I probably wouldn't recommend buying this because of that. So yeah. And then the last eyeshadow palette is the Astralis Mesmerize. I recently did a three looks one palette video on this. So again, I will link that down below. I love the Astralis shadow formula. These shadows are pigmented, they are so creamy, and they blend absolutely beautifully into each other. I thought that this color story was just really beautiful and it complements the neutralized palette really well. I did have a bit of a <laughs> with this palette though, and 
It's got to do with the glitters. So they are new. They aren't in the previous two palettes that Astralis has and beautiful colors. They feel nice when you swatch them, but when you apply them to your eye, it is just like, they're just so chunky and they do not look good. They just don't. I hate saying that because I love Astralis. They have so many products I love and I love the rest of the palette, but these glitters just, I feel like they needed to be a little bit more fine to give that beautiful shimmery look on the lid. All right, well that is all from me guys. I hope you enjoyed hearing about these 10 products that have recently come into my collection. If you have any thoughts on any of the products I mentioned, make sure you leave me a comment down below because I would love to have a chat about it. And if you're new here, I would love it, love it if you would take a look around my channel and consider subscribing. Also let me know down below if you enjoyed this style of video, just quickly, quickly hearing about some new products that are in my collection. As mentioned, I will link any related videos down below in the description box. You can also come follow me over on Instagram to see more makeup looks and hear me talk crap on Insta stories. So there you go. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.